Anastasia. Reefer's worst enemy. A plague to reef tanks and a danger to corals everywhere. Impossible to destroy by means of typical warfare. Multiplying faster than you can ever hope to remove them. Until now. So I just got notified that the nudie branches are going to be here today and I have not set up anything yet, so... So it's perfect timing, right after I got done cleaning out the tank, the package of Aptasia eating nudie branches showed up on my doorstep. I got these slugs from Salty Underground, but if you want to get some as well, I'll have an up-to-date recommendation of where to get them from in the description of this video. But wait, why do I even want these little things? First, let me give you some background. Aptasia eating nudie branches are the only real cure to Aptasia, which can sting corals, reproduce quickly, and overall are a huge headache to most reef tank owners. Some of the most common methods of removal all have at least one giant downside, or they just straight up don't work at all. Manual, chemical, and critter removal are the three main types. Out of all these methods, manual removal is probably the most effective if you can catch them early, especially before they ever get into your tank. If you look closely at all your new coral frags, you can scrape them off before they ever get in. But the problem is, is if you use this method once they're already in your tank, removing them with tweezers may leave behind tiny pieces of Aptasia that float away in your tank. These tiny pieces then begin to grow into new Aptasia. An even bigger problem lies in the fact that even if you do successfully get rid of the ones you see, there's probably more in spots you can't see, such as rock crevices and tank plumbing. The next method is chemical removal. The two main ones are spot treatments and whole tank treatments. Spot treatments such as Aptasia X or injecting Kalkwasser directly are slightly better than removing them manually as you're less likely to tear any part of them off, which would create a new Aptasia somewhere else in the tank. But you still have to deal with the same problem. For everyone you do see, there's probably many more that you don't that are going to continue to spread throughout your tank. This method is more of a way to keep the population under control rather than really solving the problem. Then there's the myth of peppermint shrimp and copper band butterfly fish eating them into extinction. Usually these fish and inverts are very picky and the Aptasia is often not their meal of choice. They're much more likely to get full of fish food and algae than hunt down Aptasia. And even if they do decide to pick at some occasionally, they very rarely eradicate them. This is because they can't get into tight crevices or under rocks where Aptasia will happily live and continue to breathe. That's where Bergia nudibranches branches come in. They're basically the ultimate Aptasia killers, as they have evolved to eat nothing other than and only Aptasia. One of their best adaptations is the ability to completely eat Aptasia alive without tearing off any pieces into the water like most other removal options do. Another benefit going for them is their size. At their biggest, they only get to be about an inch to an inch and a half long. This allows them to search almost anywhere in your tank where Aptasia may be hiding. Another nice thing about their size is the tiny amount of bio load they add to your tank. 
in comparison to something like a fish or a shrimp that adds a lot more waste and eats a lot less Aptasia than the slugs do. So if you're considering getting some of these Aptasia annihilators, you have to keep in mind it can be a pretty big upfront investment, as some places charge up to $20 or more per slug. And you're gonna want to get a minimum of three to tackle an Aptasia problem. But they're definitely worth it because they will remove all the Aptasia in your tank without any of the downsides of the previously mentioned methods. However, once they eat all the Aptasia, they'll starve to death in about five to seven days as it's their only food source. Because of this, I highly recommend setting up a separate tank like I did if you have any extra space to put something like this. One system is for growing Aptasia and the other is for breeding slugs. Some of the other reasons why I recommend you do this is it can be expensive to buy Bergia in general, but if you have a large tank or have multiple infected tanks like I do, it's exponentially more expensive, as you should have about 10 slugs for a 100 gallon tank. There's a lot of other reasons why you probably want to set one up as well. Setting up a separate tank will allow you to easily give them to your friends with infected tanks if you're feeling generous. Or, if you're lucky enough to have a bunch of reef hobbyists that live near you, the chances are they're in need for a cure for Aptasia as well. In that case, you can sell them locally and recoup your investment for setting up your slug farm. This also works out great for your local reef hobbyists because you can save them the expensive overnight shipping costs you have to pay when ordering slugs online. So if you're interested in this, I will have a link in the description of this video that will bring you to a neatly organized list that I made of all the things you will need to set up a slug farm. All the items have links below them so you can easily order everything from there. I'm going to be keeping this list up to date with the best gear for the price that is available. So if you guys see something on there that's out of stock or you find something that's better or cheaper and I don't notice it first, just leave a comment on the list or on this video and I'll update it as soon as possible. All right, let's set up this farm. You're gonna need two 10 gallon tanks. You can use any size, but these seem to be the easiest and the cheapest to find themselves and the stuff that goes with them. One of the 10 gallon tanks is for growing Aptasia and the other is for your slugs. You need to grow the Aptasia in a separate tank because the Bergia are relentless hunters that will not stop until all of the Aptasia are gone. Growing Aptasia in a separate tank will allow you to keep and breed them sustainably. So the first thing you need to set up the tank for the slugs is a heater, air pump, airline tubing, and an air stone. Once you have all of these things, fill up the tank halfway, around five gallons worth of water from an established reef tank. And then the other half with fresh batched salt water. Set the heater in the Bergia tank to whatever temperature it is in your reef tanks. So that way when you take the slugs from the farm to your reef tank there is no temperature difference. In my case I keep all of my tanks at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what I set my farm's temperature to as well. Pro tip, aquarium heaters internal thermostats are very unreliable and shouldn't be trusted to heat a tank to what they say they're heating it to. So make sure to use another temperature monitor or probe to make sure it's actually at the right temperature. Another thing you will need is an air pump. This will help the water oxygenation and stop it from getting stagnant. Air pumps with dual nozzles will be the best as you won't have to deal with any adapters to split the air line to the other tank as it'll need to have water circulation as well. The air stones on the end will just make the bubbles smaller, getting more oxygen into the water and causing less splashing on the surface. And that brings us to the last part of the setup. Having a good lid is important to keep evaporation to a minimum. Try to get one with the least amount of holes. This is ideal. The two lids I found lying around are not the best examples of this because they have a couple of big openings on them that let splashes of salt water escape. In combination with your lid, it's a good idea to keep the water level lower than the maximum height of the tank. You can pretty easily mark this with a permanent marker so that way you can see how much water has evaporated, allowing you to add fresh water back in before it raises the salinity. Now setting up the Aptasia tank is going to be completely identical to the the slug tank with the two differences being the substrate and the lighting. 
for the substrate, some cheap freshwater aquarium gravel works great. The reasoning for this is that Aptasia typically like to attach and grow on rocks as opposed to sand or glass. Having them grow on small pebbles allows them to be easily transferred from the Aptasia tank when feeding the slugs. This also keeps the tank clean because you can pick up the pebbles after the Aptasia has been eaten off of it. Then just wash it off just in case there's any Bergia eggs on it before you put it back into the Aptasia farm. The Aptasia tank will also need a light. Really any light that can grow plants or corals will be just fine for growing Aptasia so you don't have to worry about it too much, just so long as it fits on top of a 10 gallon tank. It is important to keep the light out of the Bergia tank, as it does not benefit them and will only end up growing algae. To reduce the light as much as possible in the Bergia tank, I ended up using a piece of cardboard and placed it snugly between the two tanks. So now, after getting these two tanks up and running, this is what your setup should look like, or at least something similar to this. Now you have to seed both of the farms with Aptasia and Bergia. I recommend collecting and growing the Aptasia first in the farm tank in order to get quick access to a very large amount of Aptasia to feed your Bergia. I did this out of order and ended up not having enough Aptasia, so I recommend you have 10 Aptasia in the farm for every Bergia you get. When collecting Aptasia for your tank, Make sure to remove only the Aptasia. Don't put any live rock from your tank into the farm. This could possibly lead to your Bergia colony eventually crashing. If the Aptasia farm gets any kind of amphipods, the best way to collect the Aptasia from your infected tank is to use something like these pair of needle nose tweezers and a collection container. I highly recommend you also wear some kind of eye protection when harvesting them. Aptasia aren't inherently dangerous, but it's just the smart thing to do to not risk damaging your vision when cutting any kind of coral or an enemy. I have links to both the tweezers and goggles in the description in the same list as all the other farm supplies. After harvesting them, you can put them into your Aptasia farm. And you don't have to worry if they look really messed up when you put them in. They will usually be completely back to normal in about a day or two after letting them settle down. Now after you have a good supply of easily accessible Aptasia in the farm, you can get the Bergia and put them into their slug tank. When you first get the Bergia, follow the provided acclimation instructions, which may differ from whoever you decide to get them from. Failing to follow these instructions will often result in termination of the dead on arrival policy most good slug sellers will have. Now you've completed the Bergia farm setup. So the next question you might have is, what do you have to do to maintain this setup? The maintenance routine for this farm consists of a 20% water change on both tanks every other week, where I suck up as much droppings in the Bergia tank and excess coral food in the Aptasia farm as possible. Speaking of coral food, the next one feels very strange for me because it feels like I'm helping out the enemy. But nevertheless, I continue to feed the Aptasia either fish food or refroids once a week to keep the Aptasia growing as fast as possible. You can feed them more, but I only get around to doing it once a week because I don't usually have enough time to do daily feeding, which I'm sure they would probably appreciate, as they never really seem to get full. This next one is important. Make sure to keep the tanks topped off with fresh water every day. These tanks are going to evaporate quite a bit of water because of the bubbles. So make sure to keep the water level the same as the permanent marker line. Luckily, neither Aptasia or Bergia are extremely sensitive to water parameter changes, but even the hardiest of critters can't handle huge water salinity swings. The next thing I do has no real set time limit for how often I do this. When the Aptasia and the farm start getting really big, I cut them into two pieces, then place both parts back into the tank to speed up the Aptasia multiplication process. The last thing I do is take some Aptasia I have grown and put them into the Bergia tank to be eaten. Depending on how many Bergia you have in there, I would recommend putting at least two to four in at a time. So that way all the slugs throughout the tank have a chance to get fed. Overall, this may sound like a lot, 
but in total, I spend less than 30 minutes on average a week maintaining these two setups. Now, what will you get for doing all of this work? Bergia that are only 28 days old can start laying eggs, but will sexually mature after 60 days and will lay eggs every other day, very similar to chickens. Okay, maybe not so similar to chickens. Well, anyways, after about 12 days, the eggs these guys lay will start hatching and then will grow up into even more slugs. Now after all that, you can decide to leave them in the farm becoming more breeding stock, finally adding them to your tank that has an aptasia problem, or sell them to local hobbyists. If you decide to put the babies into the infected tank, make sure they've grown to at least a quarter inch and put a minimum of three in there at a time to maximize their chances of survival. When putting them in your tank, feed all the fish, then wait 10 minutes for them to calm down. After they have calmed down, use the pipette to put the slugs into the tank on a piece of live rock where they can securely attach themselves. During this process, make sure to have all pumps and fans turned off. Better yet, add the slugs once your lights are off to further prevent the reef tank inhabitants from mistaking them as fish food. And now all you have to do is wait and be pleasantly surprised as they slowly destroy all of the Aptasia in your tank over the next weeks. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you know someone who has an Aptasia problem and could benefit from this video, send it their way. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.